All right, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the first recording of How to Be a Superhero, the, the superhero uh, TV show. Um, and this is the, the interview edition. I'm thinking about doing a few different uh, types of shows, but so in this, we're gonna interview different people about what their superpowers are. And so today I have Lane Prebor, and um, I'm really excited to get to talk to him. He, uh, he's, a, he's a great friend and I actually got to do, be the first guest on his show. So I'm, I'm excited to, to return the favor and uh, and hear what he has to say. And so, welcome, Lane. Well, thank you, Micah. That that's really wonderful. No, it's all my honor to be here. And I really, just very quickly, I owe you a debt of gratitude that can't be repaid because you kicked off that podcast, right, for U.S. Student Legal Services Lunch with Lane. And thank you. Once you did it, you know, we had a whole slew of guests, you know, that followed. But we we had to get it going. And I think you really inspired all of us. Thank you again, Mike. Absolutely. Um, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm glad that it worked out. Worked out wonderfully, I think. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. I can't wait to be interviewed. I'm always interviewing, but this is so fun for me to like switch places, you know, so to speak. So no, no pressure on me. <laughs> none, at, none at all. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's let's get started then, because I want to I want to hear uh, a little bit more about you, about what you do, uh, what your hobbies are, what you do for fun. Um, let, let's give us like the a little uh, you know a brief rundown of 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 who you are and yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, my name is Lane um, and uh, last name Prebor. I'm an attorney at the University of Florida Student Legal Services. I've been working here for about a decade now. Um, love it. Um, and, and really, honestly, I do love it. I love every day assisting students um, and, and, and helping to support them. And um, I, I'm not sure who's the mentor, Mike, you know, here. They mentor me. Um, you know, um, with their stories and, and culture and, and, and certainly the classes and everything that they're taking, you know, and I'd like to return the, the favor to them as well. But very briefly, um, I was born in Gainesville, Shands Hospital, uh, many, many years ago. My dad was going to school on the GI Bill back in the day. So I actually lived on campus at Veterans Housing, Florida Veterans Housing, also known as Flavet. Um, Flavet Field, which I, I know you know, and it was right in front of that there. Um, grew up, my dad got a job up in um, North Carolina. We moved up there um, and um, went to, uh, to school up there, high school, graduated. And I was lucky. I got a chance to, uh, to go to Japan as a foreign exchange student. And um, that was really very, very important, I guess, uh, for me and um, introduced me to the, the, the wider world. Um, came back, got my bachelor's uh, in science and management, and ended up going back to Japan to teach um, English um, to, to, to their students through the Japanese Ministry of Education, Japanese Mumba Show, and um, taught there, met my wife, who's also a teacher. Yuko and I came back. I went to law school. She was getting her master's up in Vancouver at the time. I was getting my law degree here back again, University of Florida. Uh, everything comes full circle, right, Mike? And um, have worked in private practice um, and now working at the university and um, get to assist our wonderful students every day um, with their legal issues, majority of which probably landlord tenant right now, especially during COVID. Um, you know, we have a lot of safety issues, a lot of students that, that couldn't pay, um, you know, or, or, or didn't want to pay for an apartment they weren't living in. Um, we also do everything from a simple traffic ticket through criminal cases, um, civil matters, divorces, name changes, expunction, sealing of criminal records. It's almost easier to say what we don't do, bankruptcy, admiralty, areas of law, personal injury, right? Um, and um, immigration. Okay, so it's easier probably to say what we don't do. We like to think we can cover about 95, 98% of our students' needs. Hobbies. Um, I'm a very simple person. I work, I usually run or bike. And um, gosh, that's about it. I, I, we do love films. I love literature, as you know, um, and love good books. Um, we love film a lot, my, my wife, Yuko and myself, and um, very tiny family of three people. Our daughter, Ellie, who's also now a Gator and um, very small, but happy family, Mike. Thank you. I hope that's a good intro. That was great. Uh, thanks for the fantastic uh, summary. 
And uh, well, you you forgot one hobby, and that is frisbee, of course. Oh, frisbee <laughs> is more. Um, I would love for it to rise to the level of a hobby. I am such the amateur playing with you and Vincent. Thank you for including me. Um, you are what do you call the master of the frisbee? I I don't know. Is there is there a good term for like somebody that's brilliant at frisbee? Um, if it is, I don't know it. Um, but you know. Um, Frisbee file. I don't know. But yeah, thank you for inviting me out. Um, just to toss means the world to me. You know, when I get a chance, you get me out of my office and it is so much fun to talk, talk and toss with you guys. That's what's great about Frisbee, isn't it? It's just really a very nice, relaxing sport. I think you do a great job of it. Don't sell yourself short. And, um, okay. and, and also, I mean, you can have a hobby and not be good at it. I mean, that's pretty much all my hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, no, I, I think the amateur spirit is very important. I'm not a professional, right? Um, I guess I'm a professional attorney. I get paid and I'm just saying getting paid for something, you know, but I believe very strongly the amateur model and scholar athlete model, you know, I think it's a good, good way to live life, you know, throughout life. Absolutely. We're going to have to dig on that a little bit at, at some point too, for sure. Um, Cause I, I think that ties into the concept of being a superhero pretty well. Um, and so one thing I really want to ask you is, so what do you think your real life superpowers are? Yeah. Um, and this is something that your book has helped me out immensely with, and I really appreciate it. You know, it's funny, Mike, when we were discussing it, um, you know, you're talking about it's mainly a book for kids. We have it sitting in our lobby because I think it's so important, not just for kids, our students, you know, and what we would call the adult world. Um, I think the exercises in it, and one of the first exercises, you know, that I did is, you know, um, you imagine yourself, right, as a superhero, what are your powers, and the powers that I came up with, um, I like to help others, um, and I don't know if it's, a, you know, in terms of a superpower, I really enjoy it, Mike, I really enjoy, you know, students coming in, they come in under a lot, a lot of stress, unfortunately, and it's, it's great, to assist them and seeing that stress level go down. But it's a collaborative approach. It's not me telling them what they need to do. It's listening and connecting. So I think helping others, assisting others, I think I have a skill, at least maybe in the in the legal world, you know, for that, and maybe more generally life skills, but also you have to be able to connect to that person. So relating to people or connecting to people. And Mike, you know this, having lived around the world, right? You absorb like a sponge, all these different cultures, all these different things. And I hope this is, my students feel this about, about me. I can relate to anyone, no matter your socioeconomic status. And I didn't come from privilege. I'm the I'm first one. I'm going to, I'm going to admit that more, more working class environment. And um, socioeconomics, you know, we, we got gender, you got race, you got ethnicity. I like to think that hopefully I can connect with everybody across these various, you know, inter intersectionalities. And I, I want to be their ally. Um, you know, I, I want to be their helper, but I want us to be on an on, on equal footing together, you know, and, and to collaborate and problem solve. So maybe number three would be problem solving, you know, helping others. Um, number two, I guess, would be connecting. And number three would be problem solving. I think you, uh, I think you hit some key things on the, on the head too, especially with uh, listening. I think listening is, you know, uh, um, often you know underappreciated. I think the, I think uh, when when someone like is able to listen, you know, to you, that that's a, a fantastic help, a fantastic service. And I think even just the fact that you listen to your students, you know, that alone like significantly helps with, with the connections and helps them feel at ease and reduces that stress. I think so. Um, you know, we talk about having sympathy, but I actually think it's empathy. And how can you be um, empathetic with to someone else unless you listen to where they're coming from? You don't always have to agree, but you got to listen at least, right? Because that's the way that, you know, that we can connect and that's the way we communicate. So um, I'm talking a lot just because it's so exciting for me, Mike, to be on the, the other side of the camera, you know, today. Um, and I appreciate you giving me this platform, you know, to talk about a little bit and, and advocate, you know, for our office for 
just doing the right thing in life, you know, helping, which I would, for me, meaning is helping others. And, but yes, listening, you don't know how you can help them unless you listen. And really, Mike, do you ever feel this way? They have, they know the answer within. They have the tools within. It's just awakening them, right, to, to those tools. Well, that's why I think listening is, is so important because, um, you know, in the process of them telling you, you know, what's going wrong or what's what's going on in their life, you know, a lot of times the when they're taking it from their minds and having to vocalize it, that, you know what I mean? It makes it a lot more clear to them. And then, you know what I mean? Then um, answers can be a lot more apparent. Absolutely. Yeah. That, makes, no, that it, made any sense? No, it made perfect sense. And as a teacher, I wanted to ask you about this. What was the most rewarding things, you know, that you heard, if you don't mind me just asking very quickly, your students, what made you feel, right, that, you know, really good or really rewarding about teaching? For me, it was definitely seeing the kids um, excel, especially kids that, uh, you know, had, had a little bit of a harder time starting out with um, and, and maybe didn't believe in themselves so much. Um, really, I mean, that's a big reason for, for me wanting to do this show is because, you know, when, when I uh, asked my students what their superpowers were and, and they realized that they actually had something special about themselves, um, you know, it, it, it basically turned their, their life their lives around um and they they just crushed it they were creating and just like learning on their own and just the, i mean they, they took off um and seeing seeing them excel with their with their writing with their creating was just so incredibly rewarding and knowing that i had like a you know a small hand in it you know it, it just it gave me a lot of meaning and purpose and um and just going back to the listening you know a lot of it was simply just listening to them, you know, letting them tell me like what their ideas were, like what they wanted to do. Um, you know, and I, I didn't even necessarily need, need to solve problems for them. You know, oftentimes, you know, sometimes we'd, we'd creatively brainstorm, which, which is a lot of fun, but, you know, just like you said, a, a lot of times they knew the answers themselves or, you know, even just as they were telling me, you know, like new ideas came up. Um, and it, it was just so so wonderful too to see the excitement in their eyes like as they would like tell me the stories about like what they want to create or just stories in general or you know um i mean that's what's rewarding to me yeah thank you i i i think correct me if i'm wrong but maybe i consider myself to also be of course an educator right um you know in a in different way my my students are um a little older right than maybe some of the ones you were teaching but um, I also try to awaken within them um, the superpowers. Of course, you have your book outside. But beyond that, it's hopefully they do have these powers within. Maybe we don't call them superpowers, right, all the time. But they are truly superpowers when you think about it. And I don't teach. I don't know if you feel the same way, but I like to think maybe I can help facilitate. It's having that eureka moment, right? And, you know, when they come in here with a legal issue, they present with a lot of stress. And, um, of course, they, you know, and it can become the most, um, you know, the way the mind operates. It always goes around and around, right? You know, whatever is the, the, um, the biggest negative thing, you know, in the life right now. And if we're able to take that, you know, tension down and say, hey, no, there's almost always an answer. Okay. And let's talk about that a little bit. Let's explore the various avenues. And let's see from your standpoint, what might be best for you, right? What, what do you think? Is it, is it really, yeah, maybe making, coming from the person, right? And us helping facilitate, right? Those, mo those educational moments? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it, it's really rewarding for me. You know, when I, I see my students, they're all adults, you know, when they come here, obviously. Um, and, you know, whether maybe they're 17 or 18, I still consider them adults. And, but we're always developing. I always see ourselves as like kids, you know what I mean? And maybe we get older, but we're like older kids. And Absolutely. what I don't want to see, Mike, and I worry about this is this, the, the stressors that we put sometimes on our poor students and, and other individuals, right? Even if they're not students in this society. And ourselves. And ourselves. Yeah, thank you. You always remind me of that. And I, that's the one area of concern. Thank you for reminding me that I need to look at, right, is turn the 
the spotlight on ourselves, right? Once in a while, some self-help, some, yeah, some, some healing, right? Well, I, I think even more just awareness, you know, of what stressors and, and unnecessary angst that we're putting on our, on ourselves. Exactly. I, um, the need to, to do the, oh, sorry, I just interrupted you. No, I wanted to please finish your thought. Cause I, I, I think I want to just kind of springboard off it. Um, well, just, just how we put on ourselves, like the need to do this, the need to do that, the need to, um, you know, look a certain way or, you know, be, be liked by people. Um, all the stuff that in the end, um, you know, how, how important is it actually? Cause for me, uh, anyway, you know, just like you were saying, if, if I can make a, a positive difference in, in someone's day, that, that to me is, is what's important. It's not about like what I necessarily like, you know, accomplish, like, you know, did I sell like, you know, how many books or did I get how many downloads of my video games or, you know, did I get this praise or, you know, did someone say something mean to me? Like all that stuff is, is kind of, you know, shallow and in, in, in meaning versus, you know, knowing that, you know, someone's day was a little bit brighter as a, as a result of me saying hi to them or, you know, t telling them about I, something good that they did or, or whatever. I, that really resonates with me, Mike, because, um, and maybe it's my cultural background, the Buddhist underpinnings are at its base is to always work to decrease human suffering. And the same way if a student comes in and, you know, is under a lot of stress and, and if we're able to laugh and it's appropriate to laugh, if not, you know, that we can share the moment and know that they have an ally that's going to be on their side, you know, working alongside them and, um, and, and assisting them throughout the entire process. I, I'm with you. Um, if you can brighten somebody's day, there was a quote I just read yesterday. This is such a timely interview. And it said, treat everyone you meet as if it's their last day on earth right because it just might be and um you know for me that really um yeah that really resonates because i want to treat everybody with kindness and compassion and even if they've done something that i don't agree with or i, I feel maybe wronged um to kind of know you know maybe the deeper dive where was it coming from you know and, and kind of understand it, you know, from that angle, not take it personally, in other words, right? Um, Absolutely. My, don't you think I, because it never yeah. is. It never is. It's not you. It's not you. Almost never is, right? It's not you. You just happen to be there in the moment, right? And they're, they're taking out, you know, their, their anger or angst or frustration, you know, on you. And, um, but, but it's not you. It's a projection, you know, of something much deeper. Um, and yeah, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm not a perfect human being. I fall in the same trap every day, um, which is kind of the fun part too. You know, I told you this too. I would love to be, you know, those gurus that we always, you know, look up to, are, are they really gurus? I think not. I think that they get upset, you know, if they happen to be driving and, you know, somebody cuts them off, they're still, you know, and because they're human. And that's kind of the fun of it too, is that maybe you do get upset, but if you're a little bit more mindful, a bit less so, and you do it with empathy for the other party, is, is that making sense? Yeah, well, it's, it's having those feelings, but not being attached to them. Exactly right. But you, you brought up a good point about the, um, the, the self, now, turning the spotlight on ourselves. Those of us that are in service careers, you know, public service, every day, you're triaging and you're helping all these individuals. I find great meaning in that, but you can get lost in it. And it reminds me of the soldier that's battling, that's wounded and doesn't realize that they're wounded and they need to treat their wound, right? <laughs> Until somebody says, hey, you, you've been busy helping, right? You know, on all these various fronts, you, you, you know, you're, you're badly wounded. And I, I worry sometimes we, 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 we lack that insight, you know, about ourselves. So um, you, you, again, you, you keep bringing that up. And I think it's very important. The shadow self, the shadow work, the union, you know, deep dive, I, I really think are, are so important. 
Well, I think just the the idea too that you know it 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 makes it a lot easier to help other people, like when you help yourself. Um, and so you know you because I think the first person that you need to be a superhero to is, is yourself and for yourself, and then it makes life a lot easier to be a superhero for for other people. Um, and so. Uh, one question that I have for you is, sure. um, how do you think you got your superpowers? Were you born with them or did they, um, d- did they gradually develop over time or, um, yeah. Yeah, of course, you know, the easy answer is a combination of both, um, you know, uh, genes and all of that. However, I feel like in, in the, 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 the superpowers that I was mentioning, um, no, um, over, over time, they were really refined and developed, um, and um, I, I was lucky. I was in a family that did believe in, you know, um, hopefully, and I think almost all of us are, are like that. I'd say I'm in a family like that. No, treating others right, doing the right thing. Okay. I think that's that's about everybody here. So there's nothing special about that, but it's developing it. And in my case, I took it in the legal realm, right? So I can help people, you know, in, in, in the, the legal realm. And I often say I'm not the greatest attorney, Mike. Um, and, and far from it, but I, I may be um, um, w- what I would consider, you know, the, um, <laughs> the, I, the, the most dedicated, um, you know, individual, um, the most persevering attorney in order to get the optimal outcomes for my clients. So I might push it harder. This is my, my shadow self, type A OCD. I can push myself and push others very, very hard to get optimal outcomes. And sometimes it's hard for me to take no for an answer. Now, some people have said that's your superpower lane. You know, you keep, you keep that, 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 you know, persuasively trying to convince somebody until they, they give in or, you know, give you, you know, what your client needs or whatever. I, and I hope it's not like that, but, you know, it is channeling my, my OCD type A, you know, personality. And it's, putting it into law and into practice to, to help my client, if that makes sense. So my shadow side, that type A OCD thing, hopefully I'm able to shadow it to help others optimally. Does that, does that make sense? It, it does. Yeah. It sounds like it's, it's kind of a, um, a, a tricky path to, to walk. Um, and, and also I think that it is no small thing that, you know, you learned kindness with your family and have, you know, a kind relationship with your family and your, your personal relationships. Um, because I mean, that's, it's, it's difficult for a lot of people to be kind and to you know, channel, channel that. Um, so I think that's definitely a, a major superpower and, you know, one, one that should be, you know, that you should be very, very proud of in my opinion. Um, Mike, Mike, can I make a suggestion too, to your viewers, if I can, um, absolutely. Going to Japan for me, getting me outside of my shell, you know, outside of my country was just instrumental and, you know, lived at various places, obviously, probably call many places home, you know, in this world, but it really helped you when you get outside of just your tiny little family or community into a larger world and you realize there are people that may think differently or have different cultures or customs. Boy, did that, if there was anything that was fundamentally, you know, instrumental in my life, I think it was that, that really helped develop, you know, the empathy for me and the, the ability to connect, right? Because when you're in a foreign country, obviously, right, you know, everything's foreign. And, you know, you are the one that is the foreigner, and you need to adjust your thinking. So a lot of that, yeah, did, Mike, if there was anything, you know, you said, were you born with it? Did you develop it? Um, maybe born with the essence of, but my family helped and, um, gosh, there's been so many mentors in my life. I just want to thank, and people that were there for me, uh, college professors, um, Yuko, you know, and, and, and Ellie, my daughter, you know, my colleagues that I work with, um, you Vincent, you know, people that were there for me that picked me up, right. And support. I mean, gosh, yeah. None of us are an Island. I, I love your picture there. I'm thinking of it. You know, it's a beautiful island. But, you know, I think all of us are, are, are not islands, you know, and um, I, I thank everybody, you know, for I, you just can't do it alone, you know, in this world. And don't be afraid to reach out, right, for help when you need it. And assistance, people love helping. I really believe that. 
Absolutely. Well, yeah, because it, it gives them purpose. And uh, I, I think that's one of the most important things that you can do too to make your life easier is, you know, is to ask for help. Um, and that's, that's even part of, of the book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Asking others for help. I, I wish I had your book in front of me. If I'd known, I would have, you know, brought it um, and, and put it down and we, you know, could have gone through it. it. It's so helpful for me, Mike. I think the exercises within the book really have been very, very helpful for me. I encourage everybody. Um, yeah, it's, um, I got to, I, you know, not to advertise Mike's book, you know, while we're here, but um, it, really it's very helpful, Mike, and it comes from a really good place. And I don't think there's anything better, more empowering for children than to say, you are special. You, you do have superpowers. And let's help you. You can be the agent of good change. And you can define what the superpowers are. And you can find them within you. I mean, wh what great message. You know, yeah. it's incredible, Mike. That, yeah, thank you. Because we, we all have superpowers and, and I think it's, I it's, it's really important for adults to realize too. I've, I've found that a lot of adults actually don't realize that they have superpowers and that, that they have something special about them. Um, Cause really anyone can be a superhero if, if they want to be, um, you, you don't have to, you don't have to have like crazy, like mystical, like, you know, abilities, even just, even just saying hi to somebody in, you know, it can brighten their day and, yeah. and brighten their family's day and, you know, be a world of change. Mike, I remember that's in your book. And remember, I put it into practice the other day. And actually, it started a great dialogue. I'll share this with everybody. Mike's thing is he says hello to everybody in the world, which, you know, for me, it was always like, um, I'm introverted. Um, my Myers-Briggs is an INFJ. And um, it when I saw you do it and people really brighten up, you just made that person's day, Mike, which is incredible. So everybody that you run into now is feeling good, positive, maybe pays it forward. I really believe in karma and, you know, paying it forward. And I, I think you're putting a good chain. It worked for me the other day at Starbucks. Yeah, I just said hello. There was a, I, I shared the story with you or texted it to you, but I had to thank you for the idea. But um, they have a bankers conference here at the Rights Union where I work on campus and um, just said hello. I saw his name and, you know, mentioned his name. Hi, Peter. And, you know, he was surprised, you know, that I, I said, oh, your name tag, you know, I could see it. Just wanted to say hi. I said, it's good to see, um, you, you know, some individuals finally again after COVID, right? we're holding conferences. It was a banker's convention or conference, right? And um, we started talking. He said that they've been doing it 50 something years, I think, um, you know, at the University of Florida. I thought that was absolutely amazing, you know? So we had a connection, we talked. Mike, that's all due to you. I would never have done that in a million years, right? Was it not for you kind of encouraging me to do that? And it was that connectivity. Students come in my office all the time. We connect, right? But that's more, um, they're driven by circumstance and some other things. This is actually just um, spur of the moment, organically happening, right? And it, it's great. You, know, you do that with children. I love that. With the kids, you know, with the Frisbee, you always invite them in. You always make them a part and they feel like, you know, uh, and I've always loved this to you. Gosh, when I was start, started tossing, you know, you're on that learning curve, right? And you always, you know, tell, oh, yeah, try this out or try that out. Or that was great. That kind of positive encouragement, Mike, that means so much, I think. It meant a lot to me. You know, I'm a big kid. And I can only imagine, I see those faces of those little kids, right? And it's so inspiring. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Hey, yeah, they... They, they enjoy the experience. <laughs> oh my God. I enjoy the, I enjoy the experience, Mike, just watching them enjoy the experience, right? It lifts up my mood, you know, just seeing them and how well they respond and everything. And the parents are so happy seeing, you know, that they, the kids are included and they feel that sense of belonging, right? You know? Um, yeah. Thank you. I, 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 I agree. It's, uh, it, it's so heartwarming, especially when the kids start out saying, you know, that, that they can't throw a Frisbee or, you know, they're not good at it. And uh, then, you know, we just give them a little bit of encouragement. And before you know it, like they're throwing, they're throwing it better than I am. Yeah, and, absolutely. You know. I was going to say, you're my hero, you know, um, I say superhero, of course, superhero, Mike, I mean, you're my hero doing that. I, um, 
your compassion and empathy, I think reaching out to the kids. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, thank you for that. It's a lesson I need to learn to do. I don't see as many kids here, obviously at the university, right? Um, you know, level, but probably it's something that I can do. I need to do, I tried to do this. Mike, have you ever been like attending like a group or something? I know it's a lot of stuff's virtual now, but when we were in person and you saw one person kind of, you know what I mean? By themselves sitting at lunch or something. Mike, I think what I admire about you, superhero Mike, and if I could tell other kids this, go sit with them and, you know, make them feel, um, you know, that sense of belonging, you know, or whatever, right? I think I do it because maybe I'm the one that's going to be sitting alone anyway, <laughs> you know, so I would rather, you know, have somebody and, and you know what I mean? That sense of positivity, you know? Uh, yeah. I think it goes a long way to at least let people know that that they can be included. And uh, I think that's some of the fun with with the kids at Frisbee too, because they, they see us throwing and, and then, you know, they, they ask if, if, if they can join us or, or even just if, if the kid is like watching us, you know, just asking them if they want to join us. And uh, I don't know, I, I think they feel so special about being included. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It means the world it means the world to them, I think, and means the world to me. Uh, it just brightens my whole, um, you know, day or evening, you know, when that happens. So yeah, Mike, thank you. Um, God, maybe, gosh, yeah, you know, the lessons I'm thinking, listening, I guess is a lesson or it is a super, superpower, of course. And like you said, um, including others in the dialogue in our lives, that's a superpower. Um, I'm ticking these off, you know, and, and, and listing them, you know, as we're, as we're thinking about it. Thank you. Thank you. This discussion, you're bringing it up and these qualities that you have and that I'm working on, you know, or developing are something that I, I do need to um, enunciate um, and, you know, and well, articulate, I guess, probably the better word there, right? And, and think about them mindfully, you know, every day. It's important, you know, I think. Um, I don't know about you, Mike. I, my meaning comes from helping. I think yours does too, right? I, I really think that way. I would say so. And when you, when you, oh yeah, there, there's a great Will Smith quote um, that I'm probably going to mess up, but the general yeah. idea is that, um, you know, like when you, when you wake up in the morning and you know that what you're going to do is going to, to help somebody else, you know, that's really what gives you purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Um, that's the one thing I can say, Mike, I wake up in the morning feeling really good. Um, about the day, um, I don't know, superpowers. I'd like to get going, you know, with a little bit of rock or something, you know, in the morning, sometimes some classic rock and stuff. And it actually puts me in a good, vibrant mood um, and kind of a meditative, you know, mood. Sometimes I'll listen to a quick uh, meditative, you know, kind of YouTube clip um, just to make me, um, I know we, we band around that term mindful. What I really think it is, is if I get angry or frustrated during the day, I can return to that space of solitude. And just catch myself before I go off. You know what I mean? Down it's that a, path of like anger. Re Recollecting yourself or yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like coming back. Yeah. Yeah. But meditation to me, you know, meditation, you and I have discussed in many forms. I don't know if it's a superpower, but I think you can do it listening to music. I think you can do it running. I think you can do it tossing a Frisbee. I think you can do it sitting. I think you can do it almost sleeping, you know, so for me, there's so many different styles, but it's important because I think we all need a quiet, safe space to reside in. And just to realize that you can get yourself there immediately. And it's okay. We're going to do a deeper dive here, Mike, the deep dive is you and I know it's always been there and it's always been present and we forget about it. Absolutely. That's okay. we're we're getting to some Marcus Aurelius territory too. <laughs> we're that's, getting into a Vita Vedanta, um, you know, non-dualism and some other things. That's probably you know um, Buddhist tradition, you know, um, Hindu tradition. A little bit deeper dive than I meant to get in here philosophically, but um, yeah, well, it's, it's it's a deeper dive, but also not really a deeper dive if you think about it, because it's really 
it, I mean, it is simple, you know, um, we, we do have in our, in, in ourselves, we do beyond all the, all the chaos and craziness of, of our minds, we do have like the calm peace, you know, and playful, you know, a- aspects of our, of ourselves. And, um, you know, sometimes returning to, you know, ourselves, our, our playful selves, you know, and not the selves that have been kind of like, like twisted and pulled and whatever, and all the, all these different directions by society, by, you know, people and whatever, you know, um, I think it's really important to be able to re- return to that, to that self. Yeah, Mike, I think it's, it's, it's so critical. Exactly what you mentioned, you know, that I love the surfing analogy and Frisbee we can go with that, but it's, you're existing in both worlds. Um, the world of the uh, material here and now, which is the game and you get really deeply involved in the game and you're enjoying it, you know, or you're frustrated or you're stressed. That's what makes it the game. Okay. And it, it has different wavelengths and it changes over time. And then you pull out and you realize, Oh, it's a game. And I was involved in it. And um, you know what I mean? There's the oneness. Um, and um, I realize there's the oneness and I need to return there, but it's also fun to dive back down into the game again, you know, and then come out, you know, you, you know, you know me enough by now. I'm a big advocate of that. Like life would be so boring if it was all the one. Life would be so stressful if it was always the game. But if you realize two sides of the same coin, you know, and you can go both ways, you know, on it. Um, I think that's, for me, the essence of the idea of living life like um, a, a, a surfer. Um, you know, you, you ride the waves. Remember that thing, you can't fight the ocean, but you can learn to ride the waves. That great um you know, quote, I can't remember if it's Jack Cornfield or whatever, but um, yeah, just big, big believer in that. I'm gonna have to think about that for a little bit. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I, I know I'm bringing up too many things here. I think, you know, at, at one time, but this is all bottled up inside compartmentalized, you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess so. asking me and bringing it all out, you know, I'm like, I'm, and I'm trying to squeeze it all into one session, you know. You've, you've just been waiting for your moment. I've been waiting for my moment, you know. <laughs> Mike, you, you know, what did you, with this Pandora's box, you opened up, right? You know? hey, kids, so so, so what did you learn from late today? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, this is, you've got to send me this clip because um, I'm, I'm debating, like, do I put it on our website? Um, or do I put it on a, you know, maybe I would more say- Mike? I would yeah. say it's a little bit beyond the clip. <laughs> a little bit beyond the clip. I always wonder, you know, I'm looking at these 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 interviews and things that I do, you know, eight views, 12 views. Yours has 200. Or we're past, surpassed 200. Is that right? It, um, last time I checked, which was like a week or so ago, there, it was it was past 200. That's a that's a testament to you because, you know, I, some of them are up to 40, 50, something like that. The different interviewees is what I'm you know telling everybody on lunch with Lane. Um, and it's it's, um, you know, but yours has gone up to 200 views. This is so interesting to me and um, or over 200 views. And I've heard a few different theories behind it. One is just, Mike, you're that compelling and that deeper dive into spiral dynamics and union shadow work. The other one, you know, I've heard is that, well, Lane, finally you had a guest that didn't just talk about the damn law, you know? Um, so um, pardon my French, you know, there, but you know what I mean? It's the law is, can be esoteric, can be difficult, you know, and it, my pre-law student is very, very important, but you actually brought it into a wider scheme of things, guardian ad litem program, and where can you go with the law? And, you know, how can you apply yourself? And maybe that was that missing link. So thank you, Mike. Um, and maybe that's why it's 200 views. You're just, your ideas, those trigger lists. God, those are great. Um, trigger lists, fear lists, right? We were talking about um, all kinds of lists, right? You know, obsession lists, um, bucket lists. There was, <laughs> there was quite a bit of lists. Um, a lot of lists. I, I got a new one that I'm working on too. Um, not a not a hit list, right? Not a hit list. The uh, um, so it's it's a pull list. It's it's all the different things that that are pulling on me, or essentially just like like Pinocchio. I was thinking I was relating it in terms of of Pinocchio, all the different strings that are that are placed 
that I that I I, I don't always see that are there and trying to be cognizant of, of, of all the different strings. What a great analogy, you know, and that's something that might resonate. I was thinking with kids too, um, but that Pinocchio analogy, we've got all these strings attached to us and different people and different events pulling us in these different directions, right? Do we have free will? It's great. You know, yeah, we won't go down that rabbit hole um, today, but um, although yeah, that would be fascinating. That will be um, part um, 28, right, of um, an interview with Lane. So I, I do need to stop you for one second, um, just because you said you had the, the dinner engagement and we're, yes. we're a minute past when you said that would be a good time for you to go. Um, yeah. did, did you want to wrap up? Um, did you want to add any final thoughts? Um, it's, it's completely up to you. Absolutely. Yeah. If I can, Mike. Yeah. And um, I, I always offer my inter interviewees the, the same chance, you know, can you tell us final thoughts? And the final thought is... Um, help others uh, do the right thing and don't forget to also help yourself um i think it is so important if anything happens to you and you don't attend to helping yourself you won't be able to help others in this world you've got to find that sweet spot of uh, taking care of everyone but decreasing human suffering um i think is always a very laudable goal and i'd love to have people think about it um i think that's all mike thank you and i i think i, I think just just to add on to that if, if i may um when it comes to helping other people it doesn't need to be difficult um even just holding the door open for someone as as we've mentioned yeah. before like saying hi to someone i'm um, just giving someone a smile you know someone drops a pen helping them pick it up um little stuff like that goes a long long way including a kid in the frisbee toss well, I, I remember when, it, when, even when I was a kid, um, it, um, it, an uncle, he's kind of like a, a distant, you know, relative uncle um, that, you know, I, I really only saw a, a few times. And uh, I remember he just showed me how to throw a, a fastball and, uh, you know, a fastball baseball. And, um, you know, that's, you know, even now, like that's stuck with me. And just the fact that he, that he took that time to, to show me and that he cared, you know, like it was only like maybe a few seconds out of his time, but, you know, it, it stuck with me. Um, you know, even in, you know, obviously even now. Um, so just, a, just a little bit of kindness goes, goes a real long way. Thank you. Yeah. You just articulated it. I was uh, beating around the bush, but the way, the example that you gave, if it was not for the mentors in my life and your life too, Mike, right. We wouldn't be who we are. It just take a minute or two, I think. Right. And, and consider, yeah, you know, you know, helping others and things. So Thank you, Mike, for this opportunity. This has been tremendous. Um, I, I really appreciate it. And I think what you're doing, I think is wonderful. I wish you every success um, with your, um, we call it a podcast or um, uh, visual. I don't know even know if we use that term podcast anymore, you know, but um, I think this is a wonderful avenue. I encourage you keep getting the message out there. And um, you're going to have some guests that are going to be far more, um, far better than me um and they're gonna have you know far you, more profound don't thoughts, say that that's yeah that's awful to say <laughs> no 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 that's uh, that's the we we always you know I come from japanese culture we always have to put ourselves down it's interesting it's not putting ourselves down it's basically um kind of um i think elevating others is really what we're we're attempting to do you know when we do that you're gonna have wonderful guests is what i'm saying okay but and everyone is 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 really important and everyone you can learn something from, from everybody so there's so there's really no levels of, of of importance between people because like everyone can show you different angles that that you wouldn't be able to see yourself yeah 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 absolutely absolutely um yeah i i, I think that that's that's very very true it's we always denigrate ourselves don't we um i think in the world i but mike to be fair i think it's the way the human mind operates I think that we're always, there's a level of humility, which keeps us humble, but on the same level also, it can disinspire us, if that's the, the right word, right? Or, or uh, you know, disempower us, you know, sometimes. So realizing our own superpower, you know, what you're getting at, you know, here. I always, the reason I do it and deflate my own sales is because um, 
the highest form of humor, I always feel this, is poking fun at yourself. And the moment you can do that, and the moment you can realize that you are laughing at the game itself, which I, I just think is great. You know, I, I just love it. You realize the game and ultimately you can laugh at it and you can laugh at yourself. You know, it's just this wonderful thing, you know, that 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 resonates. You know, I've always the comedians that are the best, Mike, are the ones that are just, um, you know, they poke fun at themselves and we laugh because we say, yes, that's exactly me. I'm going through the exact same thing, right? You know, the the middle aged angst crisis. You know, all these things. Um, it just it really resonates, you, you know, with me. I think maybe I need to do that, but interject humor, okay? And that's the one thing, you know. Maybe I can work on is making sure that there's you know humor as well. I'm putting it on that list. Um, you know, we're going to call this aspirational list. You know. Um, but I'm going to add it as well to that. Mike, yeah, I probably should go to this dinner. Um, it's by my law student who's nice enough. Um, him and his fiance are inviting my family. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Can you please share this clip, this um, wonderful you, you, you know, dialogue with me? I would love to uh, consider posting it on, um, on our website as well. I think I can, uh, I think I can do that. You, you know, don't worry. I just saw your the look on your eyes like, oh, God, I have laid another platform for another 10 minutes. I could go on and on. And on. Mike, it's so much fun talking to you. This is this is what makes it, I think, worthwhile. It is so much fun talking to you. Literally, I just I, I, I love it every time we have a, a chat or dialogue. So, yeah, let's continue with this going, you know, on or off camera. Absolutely. We'll have to uh, we'll have to have a, a follow up, a sequel. Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're really, really kind. And, and thank you so much. And uh, continue the message. It's kind of funny, too, because um, I I think we only got like to half the questions. And now they have like five. But, um, you, you know, know, you know, that's a good, good dialogue. You know, that's a good dialogue, right? You know, that we're having. I you never know on these these interviews and things, right? You know, and I'm um, backing up as we're like talking, you know, here. Oh, what was that a warning? Um, I, I don't know. I, I didn't get one. Did you? Yeah, I got like beep, beep, beep. Um, I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Oh, maybe it's maybe, me. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. you got a text message or something. Somebody's paging me or something here, you know, on it. Paging um, Dr. Lane. It's you and I, we, we get in these discussions and um, we can't stop, you know, because it's so much fun. And you, maybe I'm hoping my same thing with other individuals, we bring out the best in each other. Okay. Um, so yeah, let me cut it. Let's end it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Edit awesome. it up. You've got my consent, whatever you want to do. Okay. But this is great. Yeah. We, 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 we can save the, save, you know, the, the rest for, for another time. We, we have a lot more to talk about and um, thank you so much for, for being my first guest and for sure. talking about your life and your superpowers and giving your, your, your sage advice, your life experience, your, um, all, all the all the great insight you had had to share. Thank you so much for for coming on. It too kind and thank you, Mike. And please, wonderful messages that you're delivering. I think to everyone out there, please keep it up. Thank you. Thank for you your so service. much. All right. Um, have an awesome day, uh, audience. Have an awesome day. Thank you for for watching the show. Um, I have hope you have a great day and a great every day. All right. Take care. Bye bye.